Thanks for joining me. I hope you're all doing well. Um, in this video, I will cover some very basic value structures that we see in both simple and complex objects. Let's define value. Value refers to the lightness or darkness of the areas you are drawing. It's usually best to get a full range of values from white to black in your drawings. This gives them the greatest sense of three dimensions. If we compare this drawing to a 10-step value scale, we can see that it includes every value on the scale. Sometimes it's useful to simplify these values into three general groups, high key, middle key, and low key values. First, I'll sketch an object so that we can look at some of these value structures. I'm going to start by drawing a cube. I hold my pencil some distance from the point so I can get a very light touch. And I use a process called drawing through. That means I'm using longer, sweeping, light strokes to draw the edges of the cube, and I'm drawing through the corners. I'm using more of my arm to draw instead of pivoting at my wrist. This helps me to get straighter lines. I'm not using linear perspective here. It's called isometric perspective, which is fine for this demonstration. And an easy way to draw an accurate looking cube for beginners is to remember that an isometric cube, like this one, is composed of three sets of three parallel lines. Okay, and you can see each set here, here, and here. I also sketch in the edges of the cast shadow. There is a way to draw this accurately using a little bit of linear perspective, but I'm going to save that for another demonstration. I also add a very light horizon line, and then I begin to shade. The reason for the horizon line is to add a little background shading, especially behind the top of the cube so that it stands out. Adding background to a drawing adds a greater sense of depth to it. And in this case, it also helps to emphasize the light values of the object, like the top of this cube. I've decided that my light source will come from the upper left corner of the paper. I'll mark it there for you. So the top of the cube will be receiving the light most directly, making it the lightest visible side of the cube. Next is the left side of the cube. It's getting some light, but it's less direct than the top, so it will have some value added to it. Last is the right side of the cube. It's facing away from the object and therefore the darkest visible side, so it will receive most of the shading. Okay, I'm shading this very quickly and roughly. There are some ways to create extremely smooth shading that I'll talk about in another video demonstration. In this video, I want to focus more on value and not on shading. All right, so I'm going to finish this up by shading in the cast shadow. Thank you. 
Now let's look at some basic value structures that are caused by light. In this drawing of a cube, we can see areas of light and areas of shadow. Shadows on the actual object or form are called form shadows. Then we have the cast shadow. This is the shadow that is cast or thrown upon another surface. In this case, it's cast onto the tabletop the cube is sitting on, but it could be cast onto another object that's close by. Notice how the cast shadow tends to be darker and has more crisp edges closer to the object, and then it tends to become lighter and have softer edges as it moves away from the object. Now let's look at the form shadows on the cube. This object has angles or corners where different sides or planes come together. We see abrupt changes in value at these edges. These are called planar values. That's when each plane or side of a polyhedron or a three-dimensional form with flat sides has a general value assigned to it. We see three sides on this cube. This side that's being hit most directly by the light source is a high key value. This side being hit less directly with our light is a middle key value. And this side has very little light reaching it and is mostly a low key value. Now notice there is some variation in the sides, especially this darkest side. In fact, the cast shadow is darker than the object where they meet up. This is because there's some reflected light bouncing up into the bottom of this side of the cube. And we'll talk more about reflected light as we discuss rounded objects. Now the reason we are looking at a simple object like a cube is because understanding these basic values will help us to draw more complex flat-sided forms. Here, take a look at this old telephone. It has some rounded forms on it, but it also has many corners and flat sides of planar values. Understanding the basic value structure of a cube can help us shade more complex things like this object here. Okay, so let's talk about rounded objects. First, I need to draw a sphere. Again, I hold back pretty far in the pencil and move my arm in a circular motion with my shoulder. Notice I go over it lightly several times until I'm satisfied with the outline. I use a similar method for sketching the elliptical cast shadow. I add a horizon line to this drawing as well. Now I change the grip on my pencil to a more traditional writing style grip and I draw more from my wrist as I emphasize the correct shape of the sphere. I begin shading in the sphere everywhere except for the highlight. In this drawing, I place my light source in the upper left corner again. Even though I'm shading quickly, I can still keep the shading fairly smooth. The key is to keep a light touch and gradually build layers of shading to achieve the darker values. Look at how the background helps to make the light area of the sphere pop out. I add the shading now to the sphere itself, which we'll talk about here very soon. Thank you. 
Last, I add the cast shadow to make it appear even more three-dimensional. So one of the main differences between the cube and the sphere is there are no distinct planar values on the sphere. It doesn't have corners or edges within the form where the value changes abruptly. All the value changes are soft or gradual. This soft or gradual value change is called gradation and it's one important key for making surfaces look rounded. Now when we look at the sphere, we can divide it into two areas of light and shadow. Within the light area, we have the highlight. This is the lightest part of the form and is actually a reflection of the light source. Within the shadow side, we have two distinct areas of value. The core shadow is the darkest area within the form shadow. On this sphere, we see it toward the center and upper right edge. This core shadow occurs because of something called reflected light. Notice how the bottom edge of the sphere appears lighter than the core shadow. This is because some of the light from our light source travels past the edge of the form, then bounces off the table and back into the bottom of the sphere, creating a glowing effect. Notice how the cast shadow is darker than the sphere near the point where they meet. And now if we look very closely at that point, you may notice that both surfaces get so dark and out of focus, it's hard to distinguish between the sphere and the table. This area is called the occlusion shadow. One other detail I'll point out is at the very edge of the cast shadow. See how there is a hazy blurred section of lighter shading around the outer edge of the cast shadow? This is called the penumbra. Okay, so why is all of this important? Well, it's important because the value structures on a simple form, like a sphere, are found on more complex rounded forms, like this pepper. Can you identify any highlight on the pepper? How about the core shadow? Can you see any reflected light? And how about the cast shadow? So I hope you learned something from this video that will help you make your drawings more natural and lifelike. When it comes to value and shading, knowing what to look for can help us to see it much more easily. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I hope you'll join me again for more demonstrations.